different stuff tonight. A little bit of cast testing, a little bit of uh, investigative work to track down these brake systems. And let's talk about the result. So if you guys haven't watched it, I unboxed this awesome uh, box. Best in best box in the industry. Real, we don't know yet. But I got it out there on the Teton and did some casting. And we got 60 feet. But which bait did we get 60 feet with? Which one do you think? Definitely not this. We got 60 feet with this. It was a slight wind. So it. I just kind of got my initial impressions of, uh, you know, casting out this bait. Uh, no problem going out and fishing uh, whatsoever. That little, uh, I call it the jelly bean. The, it's a bean knockoff of a Yozuri bait, I believe. Now they're all over. I was just at Walmart. You can buy these at Walmart for like $1.25 through the Cream Lures brand. All over AliExpress. Pretty cheap. Awesome little bait, though, for little creek streams and just little ponds and stuff. It will catch little fish. I've yet to catch anything big on those kind of baits. Whoa, we're going to lose our screws. I did throw the trout magnet. Uh, it did not throw well, but we had like a two to five mile an hour wind outside, so it was really not trout magnet season. So I had to snap on, but with the snap and with this bait already all chewed up, it wasn't quite a gram. But I did manage about 30 feet, but it was a tough 30 feet. And so just to, in the initial testing before I go into the dynamic brake system and all that, I'd say this reel is nowhere near uh, Dark Wolf Ultra, nowhere near Aldebaran, uh, the newest Aldebaran. I would put it along the lines of your uh, Corrado BFS, uh, the Lingle BFS reels, you know, those like very good for the bigger stuff, which, what did I do with that bait? Oh, this dude right here. So, like, if you guys remember, I'd our, uh, you know, roughly like a probably that for sure it can handle and up but it, it will be awesome for that stuff to like if you wanted a reel and then get a rod to uh, kind of do away with spinning gear and throw you know the smaller uh 0 0.5 0 0.3 uh 1.0 little cranks uh small baits that you'd normally throw a spinning gear just like what the like i said the crowd of bfs the uh, Zephyr is another common one here, probably in the state, since they're selling it on Amazon. The Lingle, the... Uh, but I would say that the Acura Reels, Micro Monsters, are going to probably be able to outcast this thing. Now, I didn't put it head-to-head, -head, and it was just a rough out there doing some initial testing and so where i ended up with it and it could have had something to do with the wind but with that bait i had to set the uh, internal deal on three so basically the rotor is all the way out as far as it'll go and straight up and down i could cast it without the fear of backlashing in wind or with the wind against the wind or whatever and kind of like a side kind of just got as close as I could to a sideways shot where I had the wind wasn't really helping me or hurting me too much and I, I measured the 60 foot mark so I think it could definitely do over 60 feet with uh, that little bait but I think if you guys remember right that's roughly what we were getting in my little cast testing area when I was casting out middle of the street with 60 feet and that's roughly where a lot of those other baits were going but when it comes to this uh, it is not in that class, I don't think it's going to be there. Even without any wind, I think it's going to fall a little short, in my opinion. Now, we may be able to tweak on the brakes that I'm going to talk about here shortly, but I th I just feel that the Alphas variants, you know, the Alphas Air, the uh, Silver Creek, the Airstream Custom, even the Gecko Bidgeon, definitely the Aldebaran 22, the uh, Aldebaran or BFS, Conquest BFS with the, if you guys remember right, we had those uh, chameleon spools. I don't think this reel will hang with the, it wouldn't be my first pick, especially for as much money as it costs. I would get a Dark Wolf Ultra if I was going to be throwing real light, ultra light stuff. 
and it'd be hard to say that you should pick this over like the Corrado BFS because I think it's going to be it might be a little better than the Corrado BFS on the lightest of stuff but uh, I don't know I would have to and I don't have the Corrado BFS uh, Bones Eye Guy has that now I think this reel actually looks maybe a little better it palms it palms is comfortable it palms just a touch bigger right here than the uh, Corrado but it's a very comfortable palming reel works good uh, I want to talk about, and I like to where the trigger is up high on these arises, almost like the Shimano. So, it's a very good and uh, free spinning, filling reel. There's no issues in it, but I just don't know. For that much money, uh, you know, I gave like 165, 168. It's about, you know, you're in range of what you can get like the SLX, BFS, or something like that. So, I just wanted to talk about... The brake system, and this one I noticed that they've changed a little bit because on this one, if you guys remember right, I've had some issues with the original Arise, and I still don't know how I was able to put these magnets in and it didn't rub. I guess it's that big a gap, and I could only do it on one side. But on this plate, you couldn't see a pin sticking out anywhere, right? But I took it apart, I mean, just two screws, and it's still all together. But you can clearly make out that this is a dynamic system. If you guys can see. But they got it weird. Like, the spring doesn't push down on it. pushes sideways. So it's just kind of like the... Uh, but it's like the opposite way. I don't think this works like the what they... The, what the Shimano does being on the inside and it comes out. I think what they tried to do and what got accomplished, I don't know. But I'm sure this is the same way. But you can actually clearly see where they've cut out. Maybe to install longer pins. Maybe to give it a, a little firmer. But... I just don't like the way everything in there moves and rocks around with this system. Now, when you have that on, it's a little tighter, but I just don't like the... I don't think they're there. I think this is like... And clearly, they've changed it from one, you know, the first generation of it to this one. They've changed something to add the pin sticking out like that, if you guys can see what I'm talking about. So they've definitely already made a change, and I, I don't think they're there yet, in my opinion. But you can clearly see on this one also that it, uh, one side, like it moves, but it doesn't move, like they don't move like they're supposed to move. So, in theory, what is supposed to happen is when that uh, rotor here spools up, you know, when that spool gets to f going as fast as it can, it, it I guess, is supposed to create this magnetic draw that's going to pull the magnets closer to slow it down, and then as it slows down, they get back further away and therefore free up the spool as it slows down so it's, the braking's not as hindered. But I still feel that something is missing, but I definitely, when I added these on the, the original Arise, it helped it. So you can see even better. I put them on one side, there's a little half millimeter magnets to bring it out, and I've, I've been out fishing with this, and this reel felt awesome. I tried to put and I managed to get a magnet or two on there, and it didn't rub, but then when I put more on, and I don't know if you guys can make this out. Let me look. Let 
And it looks like the magnets are about evenly placed. If you guys remember right, some of the lingles and stuff, the magnets would, uh, some of them would be in and out further than the others. So, I don't know. I think that's still a little iffy. Like, uh, I'll still have to get out and... <clears throat> Honestly, I'll just have to get out and start fishing it. And, you know, getting it set where I think it's good and then see if it doesn't... Like this one initially, I felt like it would just all of a sudden... I'd get it set and then it would just backlash out of the clear blue. Like, why did you backlash? It shouldn't have kind of thing. And when I added those magnets, it seemed to fix it. I put... A magnet I think I put one in and it didn't rub and then I tried putting them on one side which was the same side like if you hold this like this is what those were and then it rubbed so I'm like well that won't work but I not, might not need it now whatever they've changed slightly may have changed that because I think what I'm seeing that they I think those are supposed to have like a little catch where these little pins set to help hold it there and so when they drilled that out made a little longer pins I think it is supposed to secure it a little better maybe and doesn't let it be as erratic moving maybe because it seemed fine once I set it to that setting uh, which is pretty much, it's not all the way up, but that's on three, meaning that rotor, inductor, whatever you want to call it, is all the way out, and then this is about halfway. So you really only have from here and dialing it to there before it's all the way up. Now I cast pretty hard. I just have, I don't have a easy cast in me. When I'm out there casting a bait, I pretty much do a pretty hard cast. Now I don't cast my hardest, but I cast pretty hard. That's just how I cast. So when I'm testing, that's how I, I cast it. How I would be casting it out there fishing. I don't hardly ever, unless I'm just trying to lob it into a hole target casting, I might, you know, but I'll be honest. You guys have probably seen the videos. You'll see me wing it out there and then you'll hear my thumb on the spool going, -doo 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 -doo, slowing it down. That's how I aim. I like just give it a hard fling and then I ease with my thumb the bait into the spot I was going if I want to try to slow it down right at the end and let it land a little softer if I feel I need to sneak in on a spot or whatever most time I'm just throwing it out there fast and hard so my conclusion is I don't have a conclusion yet I think it's a good reel I don't know if it's worth uh, what I gave for it what we all gave for them I don't think you're going to have any issues. I just don't know if you can justify spending this much money for this reel uh, over, like, say, the Crotto BFS until I can get out there. And I'll probably put this up against... I've got... All I've got left is the, the original Lingle that I had. I've got my BFS spool for... Well, for any of them, I could put it in the steez. If you guys remember right, my chameleon spool, which nothing could beat it. When you cast hard, the one gram trap magnet champion is this dude. When you lob it, then it backlashes. But that dude right there could not be beat. But it only holds like six pound braid and just enough to fish with. And I'm pretty sure that's at least 10. That might even be thicker braid. I just had some red braid I put on it. Got a, It's definitely got a 10-pound leader uh, on the Kain Tetan 6.6 uh, one piece, which is a little stiffer. Charles has a 6.62. It's got a little softer tip than this Tetan 6.6 uh, one does. They still both have like that parabolic kind of bend in them, but the tip is a touch. Uh, they are different. If you guys were curious, I, I we had it out on like on the water video. We were fishing them side by side. There is a difference. They basically should not be considered the same exact rating rod. This one would be just a touch on the, I would call it stiffer tip by a hair over the uh, 662. So anyway, nothing's going to focus. So stay tuned. More testing. I can definitely say that it, it, everything works 
like I figured it would, and I I th was thinking this one, the Elite, that's what it would be more for you guys wanting to go bass fishing with BFS stuff, like, you know, uh, not necessarily down to this kind of stuff, probably not even really that for traditional bass fishing. The smallest hard bait you'll probably throw is something like this, and then like a shaky head or rig it up on a drop shot, you know, just a 16th ounce weight basically with the soft plastic is probably you know even like uh this reel would have no issue throwing you know trd all that kind of stuff but i'll be honest neither does my shallow spool of steez the limited spool like i can throw all that lightweight stuff but this one will have no problem with that for sure but the and i don't know i can't see that the air the one that is probably more for the trout guys with the blue knobs and stuff i can't see that it would be any the spool doesn't isn't it's not a big enough difference that i don't i don't know that real i don't think is going to be down in the dark wolf altar territory probably not even with the uh acuras because that the shallow spool on the micro monster acura is a small spool and it they can just throw they can throw pretty light baits they can outdo the lingle for that light stuff they can outdo uh the in my opinion they cannot do the Crotto bfs while i had it they're probably close to a stock uh the older aldebaran and this older calcutta conquest bfs hg i have they're they're close but the uh, newest shimano 22 the air series for the trout magnet that real ultralight stuff but then once you get up to baits like this, then it's actually they, uh, the Daiwa Alphas variants and the Alphas Air, they kind of struggle. A lot of these other regular BFS reels will beat them in distance once you add up, get up in the weight and stuff like that. So anyway, like for what I fish, I don't fish trout main. I fish that and I got 60 feet pretty easy. I, I, I didn't spend a ton of time out there. I had a lot of other stuff going on tonight. I had to go to Wally World, the gym. Uh, eat dinner, still haven't showered, if you guys smell something, that's me, but, uh, I don't know if I spent 20 minutes out there playing with this reel and got it to where I'm like, okay, I kind of get the feeling to see what it is, I tried it on two, and then I, t on the two setting here, turned all the way up, I could still get overruns, uh, with that dude. So I was like, yeah, I don't think it's going to like two for me the way I cast anyway. You lob a cast, possibly no wind. You might be able to put it on two and find a setting. Uh, three, I did turn it down. I had it on three and I turned it down to a quarter, which was... So I went from here to somewhere right in here and I backlashed. So I went, nope, we'll just leave it right there. And it seemed to like it right there. I didn't go, I didn't get enough time to go like micro fine. Could I go back just a little bit? I was kind of making bigger jumps, and once it got there, it seemed very easy, uh, actually very free. Like, I think at that setting, if I'd have played around just a little longer and how my release point and all that, I could have even got more than 60 feet, probably could have got 65. So I think it's right there with a bunch of them when it comes to 16th ounce and up, but for the true ultra, ultra light stuff, trout magnet, stuff under that uh you know 1.5 grams and under kind of stuff it is uh i don't think you're gonna you, you i don't think you're gonna be happy with this you probably won't be happy with there but i don't know it may surprise me watching what guys that go out and do with them for what i'm gonna do with the tetan i'm gonna have it on the tetan throwing primarily shaky head uh whether it be with the regular worms and if i throw those inkers like almost any of these lighter spooled reels will uh work pretty good for that so i know i won't have any issues with it for that so i'm just going to fish it long enough and then decide if i would possibly think about buying another one to put a bigger spool in but by the time you spend that much money for this reel and a spool i mean i could rob this dude i could just park him he's like had a beating and throw the gold spool in i could just throw it in this one actually but if i wanted to keep this one on tetan and throw this in another one of these and throw whatever but 
And this bull may hold enough 15-pound uh, braid that I could just, you know, go with that on a, you know, I wouldn't want to go throwing. But I'd be curious to see what this will do with, a, like, you know, 15, 20-pound test on a, you know, put it through its paces on how stout, how strong it is of a reel. So anyway, any questions? Any answers? No, Olivia Bougie. This is not the Bougie edition. This uh, Bougie, uh, I guess AliExpress. So I'm curious if I fish this long enough, will it become my favorite AliExpress reel? I don't know. The Lingle, the Acura. There's a long list of depending on what you want to do with them. The Lingle's probably still the coolest looking one. I got it looking kind of ugly right at the moment. I don't like the way it looks with those. I just, something about that. The Lingle is an awesome all-around hard-to-beat reel also. This thing will cast like a bait like this. I'll put it right there with any of them in distance. This thing is a beast when it comes to those, you know, light baits, but not like ultralight baits. But the Acura, that thing's a beast, period. But the Dark Wolf Alter, Black Knight 2, the... Those those two dudes are like legit uh, ultralight awesome casting reels, but none of them still beat the Aldebaran Twenty Two. In my opinion, even though I had one and got rid of it, is still the best reel going right now. I'm curious to see if this new Conquest comes out, if it's going to be right there with it on just a smoothness and. Uh, how that, that's well let me get to that smoothness and, and how quiet and how awesome it casts the elder baron 22 it's hard to beat for that lightweight stuff but this dude is also a very quiet caster too though i will have to admit that we're out there just throwing those few baits for the little bit of time i did like it's a very uh effortless and quiet and peaceful like there's no you know micro hybrid ceramic bearings winding up and noise it's a very you know good smooth and the retrieve it's a very smooth reel too like uh i would say if you i don't even know what to compare it to but that is it's hard to show you now because i got line and everything on it very free though i have to admit like it's a free flowing but so is this dude like there's no arguing these feel good solid refined reels there's you know this play but a lot of reels have that let me check i didn't even check the play on this one yeah if you really start to wiggle see that but a lot of reels the shimano's everything uh the high-end steez and some of the higher-end diwas they've we did that out with some washer spacing stuff, but yeah, they all kind of have that. Let's try the zillion. Yeah, even the zillion's got that, you know, if you get to pulling and yanking on something, you can get them all to make some noises, pushing stuff certain ways. But what they're you know, overall, what I call smoothness, well, this one doesn't even have a spool in it, or, but the geary feel, or anything like that, is smooth. It, there's not, a like, a geary, uh, restricted feel or anything on this one that's been through, it's been through the ringer, or this one brand new out of the box felt very good. I'm not sure if they've got, I guess that would have to be bearings, but it's so, yeah, there's bearings, you can see right through the uh, knobs. Those are bearings inside. They're not going to spin that. They're free, but they're not going to spin much because there's not much there to spin. So, so far, I'm, you know, I like the reel. I just don't have enough time on it to give you guys much more of a head up. The only, I uh, talked about in the unboxing, the only thing that I went, oh, no, you guys, why'd you do it to me? They took away the clicker here. And I don't know why. If it's an elite, it should have it. I mean, if the cheapo original Habo uh, Pro, well, they call these a Pro, 
If it had it, why wouldn't your Elite have it? And it does have a plastic uh, drag star instead of a metal one. It's shaped almost identical, which I'm not a huge fan of that shape. It's not bad, but I'm not a huge fan. I like the drag, uh, the drag star. The not a fan of the drag star. I like the handle, the length. I don't know if I could get used to the knobs look cool. I just don't know if I could get used to the feel of them. They do feel better probably than the normal ones. Should have a excellent feel though, and it does palm very good, and it feels good and looks good on this uh, Teton. It like goes right with it. So anyway, guys, get out, go bass Monza. I gotta go. Uh, if you have any questions on, I know I'm sure I forgot something about it. I didn't even weigh the overall. We weighed the spool, but I didn't weigh the overall reel. Uh, I think it says in there what it weighs, and it's definitely a lighter reel than. The one with the brass gears, and I believe this is an 8 to 1. It's called a 80 Elite HG. I'm curious. I don't know if I'm going to get that far or not. I'm thinking about tearing apart this. So not tonight, but sometime possibly this week. Taking off the side plates just to see if all the other internals are, are the same. If the only difference on this reel is the spool and the fact that they did away with the little uh, spool tension clicker. Because other than that, the cutout is the only really cosmetic different than the paint job. Unless this is... I just don't... Yeah, I wish they'd left that. I'm guessing that it's just that. You could actually take that off. It's in the cap. Maybe it'd fit on there and it click. I don't know. I ain't messing with that right now. So anyway, get out, go bass and bonsai, whatever you do, make sure you have fun doing it. I'm gonna just slap this guy back together. I bet I plan on leaving this one alone. Because it does work, but if you guys see what I'm talking about. Like I think if that was designed right, if anything, there'd be a spring going this way to where when these you know it's on the pivot here it would pull it pushing in a spring that's kind of like a it's just pushing at the angle it just that seems kind of funky made to me if you guys see what I'm talking about that just seems is it just me or doesn't that just seem like kind of weird like it shouldn't be like that It's kind of using some of the spring tension, but it's basically just, uh, I don't know the way it, that is definitely not how the, uh, all the copied of the FTBs or the Shimano FTBs, they don't work like that. And they're flipped around. So it's like when you're, a spool spinning, it's drawing it out and there's a spring pushing up on the spring like that. And it's, it's definitely a little different. But yeah, these are all of the the Habo Pros, the Elite BFS ones, the Air BFS are going to have this uh, dynamic, uh, fully adjustable. It's kind of like the Daiwa 3D system to where it's got three settings and then you do turn the dial on this. To where how far in and out they go but then the dynamic part comes from it that, that does have the capability to be drawn in if you cast real hard it should pull that in which should slow the spool down a little faster and then work itself back out but I don't know how much testing they've done or those springs you know stiff enough too stiff or that kind of stuff so yeah all right, guys, get out. Go bass some bonsai, but whatever you do, make sure you have fun doing it. I'm going to throw this back together and take a shower. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching, guys.